and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask, and in my name, this is my command, love each other. There's some great truths in there, isn't there? Some fantastic truths. In that alone, I think that can keep, keep you going for a while. To know that you remain in him. That you are his friend. So as always, when there's a family service, I tend to try to think, what, um, what can I do that will feed my message into something that will link in? And um, so we're going to have a little firework display. <laughs> Bear with me. And my firework display is going to tell the greatest message that we have to tell. We have a story to tell that doesn't belong to us. But we have to tell it. It doesn't belong to us, but we have to tell it. Okay, thank you very much. It's a beautiful photo. Thank you, Dave. So we're going to start right at the beginning. And we're going to go through these lovely fireworks, and we will become clear in a moment. And we start at the beginning, when God created the earth, and it was beautiful. And we see here a gold firework. And gold represents the beauty of God. The Garden of Eden was a demonstration of the beauty of God and his amazing power. It was perfect in form, it was perfect in everything. So gold represents that beginning when God created the earth. Black, it's hard to find a black one. Black represents <laughs> Black represents something that prevents us from being with God. You will remember back in the in Genesis when um, Adam and Eve were looking after the Garden of Eden. And he asked them to not do one thing, eat from one tree. And they did it. Did it, persuaded Adam to do it. And that's when sin comes into our world. Black represents that something that prevents us from being with God. Sins are doing things that makes God unhappy. Doing, saying, thinking, mad things, telling lies, disobeying the parents, even as Adam. <laughs> hurting others, being selfish, are all examples of sin. Sin disconnects us from God. On our own, we cannot make our hearts clean. Romans tells us that every, everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard goes on to tell us that the payment of sin is death. Our next firework is red. And this is where that makes that scripture not so daunting. Because we know that it didn't end there, that's just part of the scripture. It continues to say the payment of sin is death, but God gives us a free gift of life forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. The colour of red represents the blood of Jesus. The only way our hearts can be made clean. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loved us so much. That Jesus 
Jesus stepped down onto earth. He became a man. And was obedient to his father to death on the cross. He took on the punishment of sin. Instead of us being punished, he took our place. Jesus died on the cross so that all wrong things could be forgiven. And we sung it here this morning. On that third day, Jesus became alive again. He became alive again. He overcame darkness. He overcame sin. The blood of Jesus washes us white as snow. There's power in the blood of Jesus. The amazing thing is that our hearts can now be made clean. So we have a white firework. But before our hearts can be made clean, we have to ask for that forgiveness. It's not just an easy access, is it? It's not just, okay, that's it. That's the story. I know the story. That's it. We have to come and reconnect with God our Father. And say, God, thank you that you sent your son for me. Jesus, thank you for dying upon the cross. Will you forgive my sins? Will you wash me white as snow? Would you be the saviour of my life? In 1 John 1, 9, it says that if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. Because we can trust God to do what is right. He will cleanse us from the wrong that we have done. When our hearts are made clean, we can be with God. We can now come into a relationship with God. We can become children of God. We can call God our Father. We can one day be with God in heaven. John 3, 16, we've said it already, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him may not be lost. Does it stop there? Wouldn't that be great if it just stopped there? Because that's a great part of the story, that I'm no longer lost and I'm no longer living in the dark world, but I know the grace and the love of God, the power of God in my life. But no, it says, but have eternal life. The blood of Jesus washes us white as snow. A relationship with God gives us something greater than this earth could ever offer us, an eternity, an eternity. Green reminds us that things grow, and we've heard it this morning when we've read about the vine and the branches and things growing and connecting with the vine. Like grass, leaves and trees, they all grow. And when we have been forgiven and asked for forgiveness, Jesus comes into our life and we begin to grow in a relationship with him. Many of us are at different points in our relationship with him. continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus. 
by talking to God, by reading his word and obeying him. And not just reading the word of God like a book from cover to cover, like we would any other book and go, right, I've done it, I've read it, back on the bookshelf it goes. But understanding that the word of God, the word of God is living, the very living word of God. And it does amazing things like when we've read scripture time and time again, it offers us something new and fresh all the time. As we grow in him and we become stronger in him and we lean into him in those times of trouble, we will continue to grow. And um, as we 
we were coming back into the entrance of the shopping centre, I could hear this booming voice saying, Jesus is Lord. He wants to save you. And I turned around and there was this man on this big box and he had a few friends around him. And he was there proclaiming the gospel. <coughs> And I was just like, wow. And then um, we went into the shopping centre, and oh, many of you know my husband well. So we walked past this market store and there was Caribbean food. Um, what drew, drew market was obviously the food. What drew me in was the worship songs in the background. And then he was playing some gospel music, blasting it out from his market school store as he was um, selling his Caribbean food. And I thought, it's such, it would be so easy, wouldn't it, just to put the radio on and just be a normal market seller. But he's got that boldness to, to do that, to play these words of truth into the atmosphere, to hope that something would capture someone's attention. That's what we're called to do, is to reconnect with the colours of salvation, if you like. Reconnect with the story of salvation that we would be so burdened for the lost, that we would be so burdened to tell our story that it's not our own, but it's for everyone to hear. Yes, it's my story because that's how I was saved, I was redeemed, that's how my life was changed by the blood of Christ. But it's not my own, it's your story. And we want it to be someone out there's story. You know, we're heading very speedily into a season, beginning we see that I don't say the word Christmas. Some of you may have not started your shopping yet, some of you may have finished. And I want to challenge you this morning. Christmas comes and goes every year, doesn't it? It's been like Easter. And as someone that plans events for Christmas in school and, and um, um, in church, we always sit down and try and think of something fresh to do, something new to do, to capture people this Christmas or at Easter time. But I want to challenge you this morning. But under all that hype, under all the wrapping, there is a pure and powerful in a manger. We have an amazing message to tell and it starts with a baby. The Son of God, obedient to his Father, stepped down onto this earth to take on human flesh. But it ends with the Saviour dying on a cross longing to reconnect with us because he knew how much his father loved us. Sometimes we can sing carols and decorate our houses and get caught up in the festivities of Christmas. But underneath it all, there's the pureness and the simpleness of a baby. who carries the greatest message ever to be told. And Christmas gives us the greatest opportunity to tell that message, to reconnect people to that message again, or connect them again for the first time. I want us to go back to John 15. My um, talk here is in really two different sections because I was going to divide it up, but I'm now just going to flow on through because we're here and we're there. <coughs> and this, um, I don't know what um, your stance is on different um, translations of the Bible. Um, I don't really um, mind 
point, whether you like to just stick to one, or you like to play, or what your opinion is. Um, but I like to read different ones. And um, I have my old faithful Bibles that I've read from. Um, and New King James Version and my NIV, and, but I like to go across um, different versions and sing. And the most recent one that I've come across, uh, Ian Williams actually um, encouraged me to read it, um, is the Passion Translation. And I just thought I'll read the scripture that I've read and read what it sounds like in the Passion Version. And I liked it, so I'm going to read it. And we're going to read it again, and you may think we have only read it. But I just want to really embed what this message is trying to say within us, to reconnect us. I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my... The farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every faithful branch to yield greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you, so you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me, your source, fruitfulness, will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is dis discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into a fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples, who glorify my Father. I love each of you, and the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I have experienced will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. So this is my command. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a, is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his love for his friends. You show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I have commanded you. That I command you. And I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. A servant don't always understand what understand what the master is doing, sorry. But I call you the most intimate friends, for I reveal to you everything that I have heard from, from my Father. You didn't choose me, but I have chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit, and your fruit will last, because whatever you ask of my Father for my sake, he will give it to you. So this is my parting command, love one another deeply. thing to say about a grapevine, not that I know a lot, but is that it was originally used as a symbol of the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. And Israel, like a grapevine, was meant to be fruitful, bearing 
of good fruit to bless others. Israel was meant to show the world around them how good it was to live in relationship with God. But Israel failed to do this. At many points in their history, they chose to turn away from their relationship with God, to worship idols made of wood and metal. At other times, they kept God's blessings strictly to themselves, refusing to share it with others. So Jesus came, leaving heaven to come to earth the 2,000 years ago. And Jesus told his followers that he was the true vine. I want you to imagine this morning that this rope is the true vine. He was the source of life for people, an everlasting life. And he says his followers are the branches called to bear good fruit. To his Father's glory. When we choose to follow Jesus, we are drawn into a life-giving relationship with him. We are like branches that Jesus calls to bear good fruit. Not fruit like green grapes, red grapes, black grapes, but good, good fruit of living lives that honour him. And the great thing about the word of God is that when he gives you a picture, it continues to take you on that journey. Can we have the next slide please, then? And in Galatians, later on in the word of God, it tells us about these fruits of the spirit that we should bear as we live our lives. Faithful to him. See that? It says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. We are called to bear fruit, not fruit such as the fruit we buy from the supermarket, but fruit like this, good fruit. So that we can show people love, we can show people the everlasting joy that we have by following our Saviour. That we can be patient, that we can be kind. Just like Jesus taught us as he walked upon this earth. When we think about the fruit of the Spirit, we see all of Jesus' character. We see that Jesus is love, pure love, full of joy, full of peace and patience. Jesus is kind, he is good, he is faithful, he is full of gentleness, he was full of self-control. And that's what he's asking of us. We become like Jesus as we bear his good fruit. As we bear the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus says we need to stay connected to him. And that makes sense, doesn't it? As we connect ourselves, we are the branches. He is the vine. As we stay connected to him, we will bear the fruits of the Spirit. And people will see something about us. So it doesn't matter if we've not got the character to stand on a box in the middle of a shopping centre and shout and declare the gospel. That doesn't matter. That's not what he's asking all of us to do. Well, he's asking us, us to stay connected to him, that we become more like him, that we have these fruits growing in such a way inside of us that we are so different to the world that people begin to see something inside of us, that we desperately want people to connect with him. And we do that whatever way we feel called to do it. So you might feel called to show Jesus through kindness. You might be called to show Jesus through doing random acts 
that just speak the name of Jesus. You might feel called to go and worship him in your high street because that's what you feel called to do because you have a love of worship. You might be so called to be an evangelist and go and preach on the corners of your town and declare the gospel. On a grapevine, the branch that is connected to the vine bears fruit because it is connected to the source of life. So it will get all the water, it will get all the nutrients that it needs in due course. Beautiful fruit will naturally appear. And that's the same with our lives as we stay connected to who Jesus is and who Jesus wants us to be. This scripture also talks about if we are separated from the vine. And there's a picture to illustrate good fruit, bad fruit. Thank you very much. Didn't have a vine to bring in, didn't have a lot of a garden. So, um, here's some fruit growing well, and some fruit growing not so well. I did bring some um, dodgy looking um, strawberries with my fridge, just in case I needed a more visual um, if there was some children here. Um, but they can stay there. Um, you can taste the tea later. Yeah, not good. Um, <laughs> but in the same way, the branch warns us a bit about not being connected. A branch separated from the source of life cannot produce good fruit. No matter how hard it tries. connected to Jesus, we cannot be consistently patient. We cannot be kind all the time. We cannot be at peace. We cannot be full of joy. We need the power of the Holy Spirit within us so that we can bear good fruit. So can I encourage you today to stay connected to Jesus and you will be the bearer of good fruit and you will bring glory to your Father in heaven. Spend time with him. You don't already have a special time when you spend time with him. Think about what could work for you. The important thing is that you stay connected to Jesus. And of course, we don't simply just talk to Jesus. We also need to listen to what he has to say as well, as we get to know him better. One of the best ways of doing that is reading our Bible each day. We can stay connected to what he wants to say to us. If you and I stay connected to Jesus, we will bear good fruit of the Holy Spirit that we have heard about today. Some of you here today will already know Jesus. You would already have spent lots of time with him each day. Others of you have known Jesus well in the past maybe, and perhaps you feel like you've drifted away slightly. As others of you, maybe, I don't know, might not know him at all. We're going to sing a song in a moment as we finish. And your seats. You will see some lovely yellow bits of red. There's two.
two yellow bits of string. And I want you to take them, the two pieces. And I want you to take one piece. And in a minute when we sing together, I'm going to tie this bit of string that we wrote and we're talking about across the front of the church. And I want to, there might not be any kids here, you might think what's the point in doing this, but I want you to reconnect with the vibe this morning. And we've had a beautiful time of worship. And I want us to finish by you reconnecting to him. So, your first bit. During the worship song, as we sing together, you can come and tie the bit of string onto my green ring that represents the vine. As a way of saying, Jesus, I want to reconnect to you again. You can just come and tie it on and walk away. You can tie it on and then stay at the front here if you want. You might say that. I want to know you better, Jesus. I want to be connected to you again, Jesus. I want to bear good fruit in my life. Help me be better at showing some of those fruits of the Spirit. Let me reconnect again. And your second fruit, Fred, here. Is for you to take away and I want you to tie it somewhere on your school bag, on your work bag, on your Christmas tree maybe, as my challenge from earlier, or a door handle, maybe just stick it to your fridge. So it reminds you that he calls us friends not into our own secret group, but that everyone needs to hear that amazing story of love, of hope, and being reconnected to God. That we are responsible for His for this simple, powerful message reaching our lost world. There's a people out there that need to know that He calls them friends. There's a people out there that need to know that there's a Father in heaven that loved them so much that he gave his son, not just for people that sit in the church on a Sunday, but for the hurting, for the lost, for the broken, for whoever they might be out on the streets, the people that we meet at work. They need to know, and we have a responsibility to share the exciting news that if they connect themselves with Jesus, their lives will never be the same again. That he isn't just a cute baby that we celebrate at Christmas. That he is Jesus, the Lord and Saviour of our lives. So we are going to stand and we're going to sing this song and I want to encourage you to come and tie your um, piece of string because of your counseling. Thanks, Matt. So, yeah, come stand and sing Cornerstone and I want you to consider the challenges this morning. And come and tie one bit of string onto the vine to say, God, I want to reconnect with you again. Jesus, I want to reconnect with you. Lord, would you birth in me a fresh passion, a fresh desire to know you more? And during the song, if you feel challenged to stay here or just let that sink in, that's up to you. You just want to tie and walk away, that's up to you. But this is a challenge and a response this morning. So I want to reconnect. I just want to reconnect.